Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2 benchmarks have been spotted. Now, it shows significant improvements in terms of performance and they basically boost clock speeds of the GPU, the Adreno 840 GPU that's gonna be inside the chipset of the 8 Elite Gen 2. Now, check this out. Benchmark scores, these are incredible. Benchmark scores of the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2 shows a single core score of 4,000 points. 4,000 points. Now, that's compared to the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 1 that's in all of, most all of, uh, I shouldn't say most all, but at least in these Samsung devices because Pixel has its own CPU. Um, it's in these, it's in the uh, uh, Samsung devices, OnePlus devices, and possibly the Nothing Phone 3. The current flagship 8 Elite scores 3,200 points in the single core. So reaching a 4,000 point plateau for the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2 is incredible. Now check out this. The multi-core score hit 13,000 points. Now this is Geekbench 6. 13,000 points for the Gen 2. While the current flagship sits at just over 10,000. Now there's only been one device, and I can't remember what it was, and only one benchmark test where I've gotten over 10,000 points. Usually the majority of my benchmarking tests with Geekbench and the Snapdragon 8 Elite chipset gets just under 10,000, right? Like 9,700, 9,800, somewhere right around there. But the best one to date is 10,300 points. I would say it floats right around that 10,000 point mark. The 8 Elite Gen 2 is at 13,000 points, which is insane. Um, the Adreno 840 GPU is gonna be clocked at 1.35 gigahertz compared to the Current Adreno 830 that's in the 8 Elite is at 1.1 gigahertz. Now, uh, moving over to Anna Tutu, they achieved a score of 3.8 million points on Anna Tutu with this Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2. 3.8 million points, which is pretty impressive considering the fastest current Android phone with the 8 Elite, the IQ 13 scored just under uh, 2.7 million points. So you're seeing about a 40% increase in performance when it comes to the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2, 40% increase in performance over the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 1. It's a pretty big performance jump. Now, what? Yeah, that's all fine and dandy. All that, all the scores, all that stuff is, is, is great. But when it comes to real world usability, I've found that the majority of my phones, well, I take that back. The S25 Ultra that runs the 8 Elite, I, mine are overheating, right? They are getting hot. Now, the OnePlus 13, which runs that Snapdragon 8 Elite, does not get hot. Now, that, that OnePlus 13 has an enormous vapor chamber, much bigger than Samsung's. Now, the other device that I've found to work perfectly fine is the S25 Edge. That has the Snapdragon 8 Elite. However, it has a modified version. The S25 Edge has a 7-core Snapdragon 8 Elite. One last core. One last core to generate heat. My S25 Edge stays cool, cool to the touch throughout any types of usage. My S25 Ultra gets hot, runs hot. That's my, all these numbers are great and fine. I just worry about this Gen 2 with it generating so much performance. Are my devices gonna be getting hot? Like I'm hoping, we just reviewed, we just saw some sneak uh, pictures, some leaked pictures of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7. It's going to be running the Snapdragon 8 Elite chipset. 
I'm thinking they're gonna put the seven core eight Elite chipset in that Fold 7, just because of how thin it is. There's no room for that heat to go anywhere. The Edge is an incredibly thin phone. And I think Samsung, we don't know, we won't know until we actually get the device and can double check the internals. I think Samsung's gonna put that seven core eight Elite in the Fold 7, which is completely fine. I don't notice any performance decrease. Um, still, still appears to be on par. Um, it just has one less core to generate less heat. Uh, moving forward, moving into the 8 Elite Gen 2, that's my only worry. This thing is, is such a high performer, it's going to be generating a lot of heat, right? So keep an eye on that. Um, these things do, do generate heat, and it looks like some companies have requested a a modified version of it by removing a core to try to reduce that heat because this phone stays cool while the s25 ultra stays hot and i've seen a lot of comments in some of my videos where uh some s25 ultra users there's all actually a lot of them now are claiming that their phones are running hot so um, i'm in favor of the seven core 80 elite and i think moving forward you're gonna see qualcomm manufacture a seven core eight elite gen 2 for these thin devices for these companies to choose uh, for these thin devices to so it doesn't run as hot right now in terms of cost we know we've seen some reports that in the past that these cpus every year are getting more expensive to make every year you see price price increases now that inflation not just not just going into cpu manufacturing right you're seeing inflation across the board gas especially now with the war going on uh, in the middle east um you're seeing uh, grocery bills getting high you're seeing everything going up toys for kids uh, uh sprays cleaners all prices across the board are going up and so are they in the manufacturing world when it comes to um, semiconductors, right? So there's a new report, check this out. Let me show you this. There's a new report and this could very well, actually before we do that, uh, before we get to the rising costs and what that means for you and for these phone companies, I came across this Dimensity 9500 Geekbench score. Let's compare these scores real quick to MediaTek's upcoming best CPU versus the 8 Elite Gen 2. So check this out. Let me show you this real quick, then we'll move on. What, it, what the price increase to these CPUs. Check this out. MediaTek Dimensity 9500. So MediaTek, I'm a huge fan of MediaTek CPUs. I've used a couple of them. I have not used an extensive amount of them, but the couple that I have used, I've been blown away. Been really, really good. So I wanna see MediaTek, I wanna use more devices with MediaTek CPUs in them. And I think our story after this, with it, with this will directly tie in to our next story and our last story with the rising costs of these CPUs. So the current MediaTek Dimensity 9400 is their flagship CPU. And guess what? It's kind of funny how like when some companies leak information, oh, their competitor leaks their information, right? So this new Dimensity 9500 Geekbench score, um, leaked out right so digital chat station who in asian markets is the most creditable leaker and he leaks a bunch of tech stuff well they leaked a score from this Ge this geek bench score from the diamond city 9500 and it also shows a enormous performance increase over the previous previous generation as much as 49 percent now we just talked about a 40 percent increase in the Snapdragon 80 Elite Gen 2 over the Gen 1. Well, this Dimensity 9500 shows an almost 49% increase over the 9400 MediaTek CPU. Now check these scores out. So the Dimensity 9500 scores 3,900 points in Geekbench single core. Remember, the 8 Elite Gen 2 scored 4,000, this is 3,900, so it's right up there in single core. And in multi-core score, scored 
uh, just over 11,000 points in the multi-core score. So not as high as the 13,000 with the 8 Elite Gen 2 from Qualcomm, but it's up there. Like, that that's getting up there. This would be no slouch. In fact, it technically could... Per now, these benchmark scores don't tell you how well these CPUs are going to perform in se a said device because that's only half the battle, right? The CPUs and GPUs can generate so, so, so much power, but it's up to the developers from each phone company to fine tune that power. It's like a race car, right? You can have a engine, which is comparable to CPU, that generates so much power out of its pistons, right? But it's up to the team, to the race car team, to the F1 team, to not only take that power, but apply it to the ground, apply it to your car. So you have to fine tune the suspension. You have to fine tune the timing of that motor. You have to fine tune everything. So having that power is only half the battle. Um, real world usability, that comes into play with the developers, right? The app developers, these phone developers, developers at Samsung, developers at nothing, developers at Oppo, developers at OnePlus, developers at Xiaomi with their own X-Ring CPU, right? They have to fine tune that power to give you nice, smooth uh, uh, feedback, gameplay, usability in the operating system. So just the fact that they are neck and neck with these scores means that you should have a very powerful, very capable uh, CPU for MediaTek. And I really want to see and use this device, excuse me, this, this, this chipset. I just don't know what devices will be carrying it, but uh, I will keep you in tune with what devices these um, CPUs are going to be launched in, right? So it looks like the Dimensity 9500 is going to be manufactured by TSMC. And of course, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2 is going to be manufactured by TSMC. The, the 8 Elite Gen 2 is going to be, be on an all brand new 2 nanometer node. So currently, the 8 Elite, which is in Samsung flagships, um, and most other flagship CPUs are on a 3 nanometer node. The 8 Elite Gen 2 is going to be on a 2 nanometer node, cutting latest cutting edge technology. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. Is this MediaTek Dimensity 9500? Let's see. Is this on a 2 nanometer node? It says these numbers are phenomenally high and borderline unattainable with just a minor node upgrade. TSM3, TSMC, okay. So the MediaTek Dimensity 9500 is going to be on a 3 nanometer node, third generation. So they this will not be on the 2 nanometer, but uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 80 Elite Gen 2 will be on a 2 nanometer. So you have the Dimensity 9500 on a 3 nanometer uh, and the 8 Elite Gen 2 on the 2 nanometer.